I go to dinners a lot with my family. My mom, my dad, my sister, and I. We order our food, and then almost immediately, all three of them pull out their phones. Until now, I hadn't been on my phone in months, so I usually just sit there in silence. It feels like they would rather spend time on their screens than be with me or anybody else. It's as though the people you're with just disappear, and you're left all alone. That's what can happen when you're surrounded by people with phone addictions. Out of 382 million people in America, 75% of them say they're addicted to their phones. The telephone was originally invented in 1849 by an Italian immigrant, Antonio Mucci. Since then, phones have developed into devices that can reach and do almost anything. The first smartphone ever created was made in 1992 and released to the markets in 1994. It was a long, narrow, bulky object called the Simon Personal Communicator. It was the start of years of advancements in so phone and social media technology. After that, Apple created the first version of the iPhone, called the iPod. It was released on June 29, 2007. Social media is a different story. The first social media network was created in 1997, called Six Degrees. It was a website that people could connect and communicate on using their real names. Since then, people have been making more and more social media apps. From 2003 till now, there have been so many new apps, like MySpace, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Vine, Musical.ly, TikTok, and so on. People have been becoming addicted to technology since the 1990s, when it first became an addiction you could actually be diagnosed with. 66% of the UK's population suffers from something called nomophobia, which is an actual fear of being without your phone. The number of people with it is still rising. There's also something called internet addiction disorder, which causes severe depression and was first discovered in 1996. Since then, the amount of people with technology addictions has just been increasing. My parents used to always tell me to get off my phone, but for the past for the past few months, it's been the opposite. About eight months ago, I watched a documentary called The Social Dilemma. It was all about the behind the scenes of social media. My friends and I were inspired to get off our phones for a week. But at the end of the week, we realized we wanted to do it for longer. So we made a plan to go back on our phones the next week. Then the next, then the next, then the next, until it had been three months without our phones. We figured it had been long enough, so we went back on our phones for not even a day. But to our surprise, we realized how much we disliked our phones compared to the phone-free world we've been living in. We realized that the bright, 2D world of a phone screen can't compare to the vibrant world around us that we can experience with all of our senses. And so, our little experiment continued. I noticed the people around me becoming sucked into their screens so much more. I became aware of how big a part phones played in my family's lives and the lives of everyone around me, and I wanted to learn more about it. I convinced five students from grade 8 to grade 12 to do an experiment with me. Noli, Noah, Tarn, Noah, and Avel went off their phones and social media for seven days, and I had three interviews with each of them. The first interview was at the beginning of the week, sometimes right when they gave their phone away. The second one was in the middle of the week, and the third was at the end of the week when they got their phones back. I also did some follow-up interviews a few weeks after the participants got their phones back. But not all the experiments were the same. One of the first participants actually just quit the experiment not even halfway through. He simply couldn't do it. When Tarn did the experiment, he didn't make it all the way and felt badly and decided to start all over again. Another participant was going to the experiment by just keeping her phone to text people and deleting social media. But she didn't even do that. It's really interesting to watch people's different reactions to this idea, especially having gone through it myself. It showed me how massive the impact of our technology can be in everyone, including me. While working on Quest, I sent out a survey to everyone in middle school. I found out that 60% of students wish they spent less time on their phone. Our phones play such an important role in our lives that some people couldn't even consider the idea of parting with them for just one week. 
I got told no by quite a few people before I found my five participants. And despite the many positive changes, at the end of the week, I asked each student if they wanted to continue for longer, and no one said yes. <laughs> I also asked them if they would consider downgrading to a flip phone, and a few said yes, but when pressed, they wouldn't do it. Some of the participants said they would have seen more changes with a longer period of time, or that they wished they would have done it for longer, yet no one actually did. All of them said the experiment really helped them and that they were happier without their phones, and most of them said they could definitely manage without one. But they all wanted them back. So why, even though we know the risks and negative impacts our phones cause for us, do we want them so much? Almost every single participant said it was communication. They wanted to reach out to their friends, to plan stuff, and to hang out. But without their phones, they found ways to do that anyway. They either reached out through their parents and the people around them, or they used email. One of the participants, Avel, said that at first she kept trying to email her friends, but none of them would check their email, so she got really frustrated. But then, towards the end of the week, she said she felt she didn't need to anymore. She felt she didn't need to know everything, and she was what she wasn't desperate for information or contact anymore. She felt she was way more productive and more positive. In fact, all of the participants had positive impacts from the experiment. All of them said they had a realization of how much they could do when they weren't distracted by their unnecessary technology. Another participant, Noli, said that she said she felt she had way more time to work on her quest and schoolwork. She said she was in a much better mood compared to when she had her phone and that she felt creative and free. Noah said that she felt constantly calmer without her phone. While doing some of my research, I came across a video that was all about how notifications and emails from your technology create ripples of distraction in your mind. Imagine your mind is like a calm lake. And every time you get a notification, it's a ripple, splashing that lake and causing it to be wavy and sometimes chaotic. It disrupts your calmness and breaks down your ability to focus. Noah felt calmer because of the lack of people trying to reach out to her and the lack of notifications from it. I decided that I wanted to show what I'd learned from this experiment with anyone who wanted to know more about it. So I created a documentary. I pieced together all of my information, footage, and interviews to create a short 20-minute film people could learn from. I can't show the whole film right now, so here's a trailer for it. Um, Everything in terms of mental health and happiness is deteriorating among teens, and that began around 2011 or 2012. Hi, I'm Keegan. I got five students to go completely phone-free for a week. I wanted to figure out how important their phones were to them and how significant the impact would be on their daily routines if they weren't there anymore. The first step in this experiment was finding people who would actually do it. I kind of messed up on the first day because I used it for music. So it took a while, but eventually I got my five participants. Hi, I'm Noli. I'm Noli. My name is Talon Hudson. Hi, my name is Noah. Hi, I'm Abel. They each had three interviews for the week. One on the first day, when they gave up their phones. One in the middle of the week, to check in. And one at the end of the week, when they got their phones back. I was curious, going into the experiment, what it was that teens use their phones for the most. I usually wake up and I go straight on my phone to kind of see what my friends have texted me. I text people a lot and I go on social media. Useless stuff. Communicating with people and social media. Probably watching YouTube. Mostly like Instagram and like Snapchat. Usually when I get up in the morning, I'm on my phone. Or when I go to bed, I'm on my phone. It was a strange new notion for them, and none of them would probably have ever gotten close to doing something like this if it hadn't been for my quest. Would they be scared, excited, or both? Would they even make it through the week? No, I don't think so. I'm kind of like nervous because I don't really know what to expect. I'm hoping I'll get through it, but <laughs> I don't know. I don't have very high expectations for myself. <laughs> no, I really I have no idea where it's going to go. I'm excited, but I'm nervous. About three days later, I conducted the second interview. I definitely feel more positive. Not looking down as much. Like, I've been doing a lot more art. I feel a lot more calm that I'm able to just do it with a flow. Sometimes I, like, go look for my phone, but I'm like, oh, wait, I don't have it. I used to think 
oh, like, if I get off my phone, I'm not gonna be more creative. That's just something that my parents tell me. I guess I've been playing with my dogs a lot more now that I don't have my phone. For living my screen time, I just put my phone down and I don't take it everywhere I go, so I'll leave it in my bedroom. Me on my phone, I love it. <laughs> and I think it's great, but when I'm off it, I think about all the bad things it does. I think after this week, I'll feel a lot less addicted because I know what it's like without. Just going off of your phone for one week can make a difference. Everyone that did the experiment and went off their phones for only seven days felt a change in themselves. They said that knowing how they felt and acted without their phone would definitely affect how much they used it in the future. And all they had to do was say yes. My hope is that this experiment creates an impact, that it educates people and maybe inspires someone to try this for themselves. You don't need a reason to get off your phone and you don't need someone to tell you to do it. This project is not only a way for someone to try something completely new and different, but also for it to affect how they live on a daily basis. People could be so much more productive and just happier altogether. One of my biggest wishes for my quest is that it changes the way my family sees their phones so that they can be present with the people they're with and have a much better time than they would have on their phones. And so that the next time we're at a dinner, they're really there with me. As Edward Tuft once said, there are only two industries that call their customers users, illegal drugs and software. <laughs> I want to say thank you to my Quest teachers, Ibu Jackie, Pak Dave, and Ibu Nicola, for helping me make my project so much better. I also want to thank my mentor, my mom, for guiding me through the whole process and helping me come up with new ideas and solutions, and to my dad for helping me edit and create my documentary. Thank you to my friends for giving me great notes to improve, and thank you to the five participants in my experiment.